Ferrari's team. Quickly in this race, let's hope it's controlled heading towards the first. Here the others joining him now. It's looking promising for a first timer. The flag is not raised. it is and they're off first time for this Randox Fox Hunters Open Hunters Chase in the centre Grand Wire in a red cap Redwood Dawn Rising jumping up and Lieutenant Rocco probably led on the right with the big white blaze Spyglass Hill is going forward as well Romeo Magico it's on the line is on the inside on the right green and yellow hoops and then further back to hard line focus point a little bit mistake from Windsor Windsor Avenue and Matt's commission has unseated there at the second as they now head on towards the chair and Lieutenant Rocco from Spyglass Hill then Rebel Dawn Rising Animix is the grey focus point and then Time Leader wider out is Benny's King as they jump and a terrible mistake there by focus point and gone is Drom Flight and also gone is the Big Lens uh, the Big Lens is up on his feet so is the rider Drop Flight's rider is just sitting up now and Drop Flight is fine as they jump the water jump and Spyglass Hill Lieutenant Rocco Benny's King is on the outside then Rebel Dawn Rising and Gaborio is now very handy. Captain Mathan on the outside of Time Leader. Cat Tigers back on the inside. They're followed by Romeo, Magico and Animix and Focus Point who made that bad mistake. Then behind these Espoir de Guy. Captain Tommy, it's on the line, is towards the inside and then behind these is Hard Line round the inner as well, just behind Windsor Avenue and they're followed by T Clipper and then Grand Wire and Rikers Island is at the back of the field as they cross the Melling Road and head towards the next plane fence with Benny's King now very handy on the outside. Uh, Benny's King just about led them over fence number five, of which they're all safely over. Lieutenant Rocker remains handy, Spyglass Hill and Time Leader behind the gallop as well, with Rebel Dawn rising prominent, then Gaborio, wider out is Captain Mata, followed by Cat Tiger, then Focus Point is Spider Guy and Captain Tommy as they leapt over fence number six. They're all safely over. The back marker was slow though. That was Rikers Island. Lieutenant Rocco, Spyglass Hill approach the open with Benny's King prominent, Rebel Dawn rising and time leader, Benny's King another mistake, Cat Tiger has gone, he's unseated rider, Riker's Island has been pulled up before the ditch as Lieutenant Rocco Spyglass Hill and Benny's King lead the way from Rebel Dawn rising and then Captain Matin followed over on by Gaboria, then Captain Tommy the back marker some way behind now is Grand Wire as they continue the run towards Beaches. And heading towards fence number nine, Benny's King on the outside towards the inside of the course is Lieutenant Rocco, Rebel Dawn rising is up there with Spyglass Hill as they take the one before Beaches. Focus Point is well back in the field in company with Windsor Avenue as they head towards Beaches and it's Benny's King on the outside off Spyglass Hill. Lieutenant Rocco. Dale Peters is there on board Rebel Dawn Rising. Captain Mathan is on the outside then Time Leader Angaborio as they take Beaches. Captain Tommy is next then Romeo Magico ahead of T Clipper as the field run towards Foynave and on the inside there is a loose horse and it is Spyglass Spyglass Hill, Spyglass Hill, the loose horse just jumped across the leader, time leader is making ground, Lieutenant Rocco on the inside just squeezed along, Rebel Dawn rising, Benny's King the outside, then Gaborio, Captain Mathan, Captain Tommy, T Clipper and Romeo Magico as they head towards the canal turn, a loose horse preceding them, gets over it in front, Spyglass Hill, Gaborio is unseated there, as Spyglass Hill leads time leader, Rebel Dawn rising, Benny's King on the outside, then Lieutenant Rocco and Captain Mathan as they reach Valentine's. And over for Valentine's time leader just in front Lieutenant Rocco there made a mistake looks like focus points have been pulled up at the back as Benny's King will lead them towards the 14th from time leader and Rebel Dawn Rising, Spyglass Hill completes the leading quartet then Captain Mata, followed by Animex, then King T Clipper and Captain Tommy, it's on the line has been ridden along, then Romeo Magico that one in turn clear from a hard line they're running towards the final open ditch and over four out it was Benny's King who landed out in 
front from Time Leader, then Spyglass Hill and Captain Matan and Rebel Dawn Rising. The grey Animix is behind those. It's on the line, he's trying to edge closer then. T Clipper Romeo Magico, away then from Captain Tommy as they jump over three out. And it's Benny's King who shows the way under Sean O'Connor from Spyglass Hill who's racing in second under James King. Time Leader to his outside and Hugh Edwards. These are leading trio. Captain Matan is next in fourth and then Rebel Dawn Rising and Animix from its on the line is latched onto that leading group. Espada Gui has been pulled up. Looks like Lieutenant Rocco is also going to be calling it a day shortly. They're about to turn towards Amy the Fox Hunters. Benny's King shows the way from Time Leader Rebel Dawn Rising, Captain Mahan, and then came Animix and it's on the line. And it's been hard work for the favourite. It's on the line, but slowly but surely he's getting into the contest, but he's been off the bridle for a long time. They head down towards the second last, and it's Benny's King from Time Leader and Rebel Dawn Rising. Animix the Grey has made steady progress. Then Captain Mathan, and on the right, it's on the line. Followed out wide by Romeo Magico and back to T Clipper as now they race on towards the final fence. Uh, back in the field, Spyglass Hill has been pulled up, and it's Benny's King that leads the way. Second last year. Can he go one better? Bernie's King is over from Time Leader. It's on the line now into third, having made relentless progress. Animix is fourth under pressure. Captain Mathen and Robio Magico as they race on the run in towards the elbow. Time Leader draws up on the outside of Benny King. Benny's King and they're interfered with by the loose horses there. It's on the line. It's got clear sailing down the outside and beginning to get there. It's on the line from Benny's King inside the final furlong and it's on the line. And this is a triumph for perseverance. It's on the line, never going in the hands of Derek O'Connor, but he's in front where it matters, and he wins the Randox Fox Hunters from his second Benny King, second again, Animix in third, then Time Leader, followed back to Keith. T Clipper, Romeo Magico, Hardline, Captain Mathan, Captain Tommy, and Rebel Dawn Rising may be the last to cross the line. It's on the line, has won the Randox Fox Hunters chase. Derek O'Connor enjoyed a golden Cheltenham Festival and he has now won his second edition of this race following Bal the Slow's triumph in 2018. This one rather easier to foresee. A typically patient, quiet, cool ride from O'Connor. How much rope was he giving them? You thought to yourself as they approached two out. Well, enough, but not too much. Wonderful run from Benny's King, the 13-year-old, jumping two out in front. Upside, a horse who runs so well at Cheltenham Time Leader, who's run so well again for Hugh Edwards and Hannah Roche. And all sorts of honourable mentions in behind. Romeo Magico, Animix has run a great race. Cap de Mata under Olive Nichols, likewise. And somehow doing some late work, T-Clipper <laughs> has run on a bit. But it's on the line, has won for J.P. McManus and Derek O'Connor. A first victory in this race for Emmett Mullins. Probably won't be his last. Emmett Mullins, whose Corbett's Cross ran such a fine race earlier today, and who has, of course, Noble Yates in the Grand National. A horse with age on his side as well, and he's a seven year old. Normally, we're dealing as you, Benny's King, nearly twice his age. He's run his heart out in second, time leader. The Cheltenham form upheld despite the shorter trip. I thought a strong pace really helped him. The last seven year old to win this race. 1979 Spartan Missile and John Thorne went on of course to finish a mighty second to Alden in the 1981 Grand National. Grand National I'm not sure we'll be seeing this fella it's on the line in the National but it's not impossible I don't think he's it's a million. 140 and he could go up a, a notch and he's a dower stay this is the bottom end of his stamina requirements really when you're considering how he went through the Cheltenham race but Benny's Benny's King understandably his record here is last of that fine run last season they rode him with real belief and him and Time Leader, they seem to have a bit of a crack at each other. In fact, more than a bit of a crack. I don't know if you agree, Martin. And just waiting in the wings was Derek, and he was happy to play his hand that bit later. Well, he's had to push and shove from quite an early stage, Derek O'Connor. And I think that's testament to this horse not really being a natural intermediate trip horse. They've gone hard early like they always do over these fences. Lots of horses wanting to get position. He couldn't really, and he couldn't go, and he didn't jump all that well either, but ultimately his ability has, has come through more than anything, hasn't it? And uh, when he was there on their heels two out, you knew that he had a massive mm -hmm. chance because I just watched such a strong stare he was. Um, time leader, you can see another great run from him. Like you say, he's travelled there so well again. Yeah. JP McManus is a, is a regular fixture in all the top hunter chases, but in fact, only two horses that have raced in these colours have won this race before. Both very good ones. On the fringe, won twice. I was just going to go on the fringe. The other one? He won it twice. The other one? Good, really good one. 99. 
Leave it with me. No, don't leave it with me. That would be bad television, wouldn't it? Elegant Lord. There were a number of horses who didn't complete. There were three fallers at the chair. Those horses are all up. Indeed, all horses are back safely. The screens were up around the rider of one of the fallers at the chair, the big lens, Alex Chadwick. We will bring you news on Alex as soon as it comes through to us. That is Derek O'Connor. What a Cheltenham he enjoyed on Corbett's Cross particularly. Um, this horse narrowly failed to give him the treble of amateur races at the festival. They may want to complete that. Might, that might be in their mind. On the fringe did it. He went and won, he went all three in one season. I think he went bang, bang, bang to all three of them and was successful. Um, they can do that next season. They still have an eight rising nine-year-old to go to war with in open company. Strong staying horse. We were almost treated, in inverted commas, to some more carnage late on. As if we'd not had enough in the previous races, the two loose ones went across. I do think this paints the picture of what the races are like over these fences nowadays. The pace used to hold up really well, but with with the fences not being as big as they used to be, I think you can get more of a head of steam from rear, like some one for Arthur have shown that. It's on the line wins and justifies favouritism in the Randox Fox Hunters. Here's Jess. Yeah, Derek O'Connor just proving how excellent he is, and that was some ride indeed. It's on the line from a long way back, and just pure class from horse and from jockey. This horse who was second in the Fox Hunters at Cheltenham goes one better in the Aintree Fox Hunters for Emmett Mullins in the colours of J.P. McManus, and he justifies his favouritism at three to one. Benny's King second again at eight to one, and third home was Animex at five to one.